Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for coming to our Manhattan New Lenox Triad. Um, today, our speaker is going to be Detective James Zanicki. It will be him from our Will County Sheriff's Office High Tech Crimes Unit. At the Sheriff's Office, we have basically a computer forensic lab, which we use to investigate computer crimes, child pornography, different things. These are the guys that will go into your computer basically after we seize it to be able to find the information. Just because you delete it and stuff like that, they're able to uh, get all that information and we use it for prosecution in different cases. So he's an expert and he's going to be talking about a lot of different things, especially computer safety and scams that are involved in the internet. Further, Detective James and Nicky, thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant Hayes. Uh, like the Lieutenant said, my name is James and Nicky. I am a detective with the Will County Sheriff's Police Department. I'm currently assigned to our high tech crime unit, like the uh, Lieutenant said. My day to day responsibilities are computer forensics, cell phone forensics, and I do video surveillance uh, retrieval and enhancement. Oh. It's not quite as cool as what you see on TV, like CSI, where I can <laughs> pull up a license plate from 300 yards away and, and get the numbers. Uh, we're not that advanced yet, but we're trying to get there. Um, the majority of the things that come to our lab uh, in Will County are cell phones, because as most of you already probably have in your pocket is one of these, a smartphone, right? Some of you still may have to split phones. I've got a, my father-in-law's kind of behind that time, and he still's got a flip phone, which is fine. I would actually prefer having a flip phone than a smartphone, because you get in trouble with a smartphone. But that does make up for about 85% of what I do in the lab. Um, the other 10% is probably computers. Uh, that number is going down every year because everything is moving to the smartphones. Uh, you can pretty much do anything that you can do on a computer on a smartphone. I do have a partner, uh, Detective Brian O'Leary. He is assigned to the Regional Computer Forensic Lab. Uh, that's the FBI lab in Chicago. He works out of Chicago. So we do work with the FBI as well. Um, that's what we do up there. We will get into, like the lieutenant said, some of the computer crimes that we typically see coming through. Um, it used to be the majority of the work that I did was with the child exploitation cases, child pornography. Um, I see you guys shake your head, it's terrible. That stuff is the worst of the worst. That now is even migrating towards mobile devices cell phones, wow. iPads, uh, tablets. And just think, if any of you have kids, grandkids that are five, six, seven, eight years old, if they're connected to the internet, they're connected to pretty much everyone else that's connected to the internet out there. So this eight-year-old boy that they think they're talking to could in reality be a, a 42-year-old man in the basement trying to get this kid to send pictures or, you know, just do all kinds of crazy stuff. So. That's the bulk of the cases that come through the lab. It's got something to do with the cell phone. It's got something to do with kids. Um, we do do we do deal with some of the financial stuff as well, um, because that's why we're here today. Obviously, there's a lot of scams floating around out there, uh, especially targeting um, our older section of the population. Because now, more so than even five, ten years ago, you guys all got computers now, or tablets, or smartphones, where that wasn't the case. The old days, it used to be, hey, we're going to just cold call a bunch of people and see if we can get some, you know, money out of these folks like that. You know, say, hey, my grandkids in jail, you know, in Paris, France, sending three hundred dollars for bond. Okay. That scam's still out there. I'm sure most of you, or not most of you, some of you probably heard or had it happen to you where you've gotten that call. Um, but a lot of those scams are now migrating over uh, to the internet as well. So the first thing that you can do to keep yourself safe out there is if you're using a Mac or a PC, so that's either you know a Mac or a Windows-based computer, is keep your antivirus up to date. You all got antivirus on your computer, hopefully, right? Yes, we know what that is. That's that buzzing thing that if you go someplace you're not supposed to, it'll send off a whole bunch of bells and whistles and say, you shouldn't be here, back out. That's very important to keep that up to date. Um, I know, like, again, I, I, I'm going to reference my father-in-law a lot in this presentation because he's kind of technologically deficient is the nice way of saying it. Um, 
he likes to click on stuff and click on forwards and, and by the time you know it he's downloading a virus and people are taking over his computer and then he's calling me saying hey I think there's a virus on my computer. I said, yeah you've been opening those forwards again haven't you? And yes he does. So keep that antivirus up to date. If you got a paid subscription keep paying it. Um, that's the only way you're going to get the newest and greatest updates because literally every day that uh, there's updates coming out to the same virus because every day the bad guys are out there figuring out ways to get in, get onto your computer. So download those updates, keep it up to date. There's a lot of free antivirus out there that you don't have to pay for. That's very, very, very good. Um, Avast is the one that I use in the lab. Uh, I literally run it on every single one of my Avast, like Avast, you made he's like a pirate. Uh, A-V-A-S-T. It's awesome. I don't work for them. I don't get any money from them, but it's literally, like I said, what I use. You, only thing you have to do to stay subscribed is just give them an email um, to sign up and you create, a, you create an account and you're good for a year. And then they'll just ask you to re-sign up with your email the next year. They don't spam you. They don't send you a bunch of advertising or anything like that. It's just a very, very good antivirus program. Yes. So keep that up to date your antivirus programs. That's going to be your first line of defense. Your second line of defense is going to be your actual operating system itself. Which when I say operating system, that's Windows or the Mac OS. Keep that up to date. Because if you don't, you're going to be missing some security patches that Windows or Apple will release. You, all, you guys all know what I'm saying about updates, right? Do I need to go into that a little bit? Yeah. Um, you'll get some pop-ups on your computer saying, um, an update is available to install for Windows 10, Windows 11, uh, OS 10, or whatever they're on now. <coughs> it's okay to click on those and update it um, because that's something that's coming from the software manufacturer. Again, that's what gives you the vital security uh, in, in your operating system. Okay, here. Talk louder. Turn the volume. Turn the volume up. Can you guys hear me in the back? Uh, you know, you're coming in, but. Uh, is that better? There is. Am I talking too fast? I tend to talk too fast. If I talk too fast, just well, give me like a finger or something, not the middle one, or like a finger. Yeah, yeah, that one. Um, so you can't. Quick question. Uh, we're going to do questions at the end, but if you got something quick, what do you got? Regarding those update notices mm -hmm. that you see on your screen, how do we actually know even those are genuine? That's a good question. Um, most of the time, um, it will direct you to a website that you can go and check, like a Microsoft website, or you can go and just Google it, because Microsoft has a very set schedule on when they send the updates out. Um, it used to be, I think, update Tuesday. I don't know if Microsoft does it anymore, but every Tuesday, you'd have to restart your computer because Microsoft installed the updates on a Tuesday. Uh, I don't know what it is now. Um, I'm kind of in the Mac world now, so, you can always Google that and say, when does Mac send their updates out? When does Microsoft send their updates out? Um, and you'll get a good idea. But there are, she brings up a good point, there are programs out there that will try to mimic that and say, hey, click here for your update. And, what it, and what's really doing is either turning your antivirus off or reverting you back to an older version of your software that they can exploit and get in there. Because um, that's the most important thing is trying to keep these people out of your computer because think about it, you do your banking, you pay your bills, you shop online, you're sending your email. Um, there's a lot of information on that computer. So that's why you gotta keep the antivirus up to date, keep your operating system up to date. Now we go to the next part of computer safety is that email that I was talking about earlier. Trust me, I love getting those forwards as well, the Trump, the Clinton forwards, where everybody's you know, sending that stuff around during election time. Some of it's funny, but for the most part, if I see anything that has a forward attached to it, I'm deleting it. Because that's where these guys like to hide their viruses. Is they'll tell you to click on this attachment. Hey, look at this funny picture. And nine times out of 10, it might be a funny picture. But that one time out of 10, it's probably gonna be a virus and you're gonna download it. That's some bad stuff to either get taken off your computer or put on your computer. Because what these guys are trying to do, they're trying to, like I said, exploit that where they can get on your computer and take that personal information. 
or use your computer to further their activities. Because essentially what they can do is turn your computer into a hub where they can now blast out all these other emails and try to get other computers infected. So be careful with the forwards. Um, be careful opening email from people that you don't recognize. Um, if you don't recognize it, just delete it. I mean, you don't even have to open it. That, that'd be the best advice that I could give you. Um, just read the email from people you know. If you're not expecting an email from somebody, or if you get an email from somebody that you know and it's just kind of garbled or just doesn't make sense, like somebody from a third world country that doesn't really have a good grasp of English wrote it, that's probably exactly what it is. Because there are like factories out in Africa and that's all they do is have these people on computers with basically a script and they type out emails. And still, you know, the scam that, hey, I got a million dollars. Uh, I'm a prince of Nigeria. I need $100,000 just to pay the taxes and then you can have their other $900,000. Well, they're sending that out to literally, you know, millions of people. And if they get one person to bite, they made a hundred grand. Yeah. So, like I said, if you're getting something from somebody that you do recognize, it may be that their account was compromised. And you need to call them on the phone and say, hey, you know, my niece, my nephew, my son, my daughter, whoever it is, your friend, say, you might want to check your email and go in there and change your password because somebody's taking over your account and they're sending out all these phishing emails. That leads me to my next point is the passwords. Don't use the same password for everything. I know you guys have probably heard this a million times, but I cannot stress that enough. Don't use the same password. And I'm the biggest, I mean, I, I use the same password for everything. And I know I shouldn't, because I'm telling you guys that you shouldn't do it. But it's, it's hard to remember. I mean, it, it really is. But if you use the same password for everything, if they crack that password on Facebook, well, nine times out of 10, it's probably gonna be your bank password. It's gonna be your credit card password. It's gonna be, you know, to get into your savings account password, whatever it is. Use different ones. There's different applications out there that you can use, password managers and stuff that you can enter one password in and it'll give you, you know, access to all different other passwords that'll keep track of it for you. Um, but make sure you're using good, strong passwords, not, you know, like your nephew or your grandson's name and date of birth, which is my password. It's my son's name. <laughs> Again, I tell you guys not to do this. Don't do it. I still do it because kind of slow. Um, so that's some stuff, that's some ways that you can protect yourself out there. Um, if you're on Facebook and you're getting unsolicited messages from people that you don't know, again, just ignore them, block them. I'm not a big Facebook guy, I'm not on Facebook myself. I think Facebook was the tool of the devil because it's, I think it's more trouble than what it's worth. But that's just the, that's just my opinion, that's not the world kind of shares this opinion on it because we have a Facebook page and a Twitter page and all that. Um, but if you don't know somebody on Facebook and you're getting messages from them, just ignore them or block them. Because um, you don't want to, what do Linux find us? I'm saying. Uh, you don't want to unknowingly give some information to somebody that can be used against you. You know what I mean? Like passwords. And the, the common one is hey, I'm a Facebook administrator. Uh, there's a problem with your account. Give me your username or password that I can fix it for you. Never give your username or password. Um, there's no bank, there's no credit card company that's going to instant message you or email you asking for account information or password information. It just will not happen. Uh, they all know that they, the way they do their business is they'll call you, which would, which would, at whatever number that you have registered with them, and say, hey, we think there's some fraudulent activity in your account. Uh, you might want to think about changing your username and password but they will never ask you for it. So if anybody ever asks you for your username or password, it's probably a scam. Nine times out of 10, it's a scam. So um, that's just some ways to keep yourself safe out there. Um, as far as the scams that are floating around out there now, yeah, I mean, there's a million of them. Again, if it seems too good to be true, it probably is. Back to the, I don't know uh, if a lot of you guys are on Craigslist or you like to buy and sell on Craigslist. Um, the whole, I want to buy your, I want to buy your car that you have for sale for two thousand dollars. I'm going to wire you a Western Union uh, money transfer for eight thousand dollars. 
you keep the you keep the rest, send me two thousand dollars of the car, and we'll call it even. It's a scam. If anybody asks you for money back from a wire transfer that they're sending you, it's a scam. The grandkid scam is back out there. And I mean it's it's out there, you know, especially on Facebook with the instant messaging. Hey grandma, I see you're online. I took a trip to Paris, France. Uh, I'm in jail. I need a thousand dollars. Send send a gift card to this email address. Give us the code. Well, if they're asking you to pay in gift cards or prepaid <laughs> cards, I don't know a police station out there. They may do it differently in France, but here in <laughs> Illinois, I know we don't take you know green dot gift cards as bond. Um, so just be aware of that. Again, it comes back to if you have a grandkid and you think you might be in jail, call his parents. Call the jail where he's at. Because uh, that one, literally nine times out of ten, it's always a scam when they're telling you to do that kind of stuff. Um, the tech support scams. And we also, guys, we have uh, some handouts up here that's pretty much got all what I'm talking about on it, about these scams. Um, the tech support scams can be one of two ways. Again, it could be through the instant messenger saying, hi, I'm you know, Bob with Microsoft Windows support, um, I need you to turn on this remote access for me so I can access your computer and fix it for you. There's that version and the one where they just cold call you. Uh, I must get that call, I, and I kid you not, no less than once a week. On my county issued cell phone, they will call me and say, hello, and it's usually in a thick Indian accent, you can barely understand them, and they'll say, I see your Windows is vulnerable to a, uh, a security threat. So however they work. And I usually play along with them. And, I, and my goal is to try to, get, to keep them online or keep them on the phone as long as possible. Because if I'm wasting their time, they're not calling somebody else. But if, you, if they're calling you, just hang up on them. Because what they want you to do is they want you to open up a remote connection on your computer so they can get on there, log on, and they can steal all your information. So again, nobody's going to call you from Microsoft or Apple and ask for a remote access your computer. They will never do that. So if you get a phone call or an instant message to that effect, don't answer it, hang up on them, or close up the, the messaging window. The other one that's still out there is these online dating scams. And I know this one from personal experience, not that I online date, but my mother, who I lost my father, she was a widow, and she got on Zeus, I don't know if any of you know what this is, it's kind of a pseudo online dating. Thing. And she's talking to this guy, and he's a four-star general in the army. And my mom, like, she's not a dumb lady. She raised me, so she got pretty smart. But um, talking to this four-star general, he's stuck in the Netherlands, and he needs money. And it, she doesn't tell me this right away. I said, okay. I said, mom, this is a scam. You're getting scammed. Guaranteed one her And of course, you know, she thinks she knows better than me. No, no, he's real. We talk all the time. We get some message back and forth. I said, well, eventually he's going to ask you for money. I said, it may not be today, it may not be next week, but at some point he's going to ask you for money. And it's going to be between $1,000 and $2,000 so he can fly back to the United States. Sure enough, I get that call like a week and a half later. She said, you're right. Well, he asked me for $1,200 so he can fly back home to the United States. And if, if you just think about it, and I, and I get it, what they're doing is they're preying on you know, people that are lonely, that have lost their spouses, and they just want some companionship, somebody to talk to. Um, but if you think about it, just lot, like, I, like I told my mom, if you think about it logically, this guy's supposedly a four-star general. He's in the Netherlands. Why can't the military just fly? Right? I mean, that's the first thing that I thought. But again, you're kind of in an altered state of mind, and you, you kind of want to believe it at that point. So that one is still out there. Yeah, it's, it's still floating around out there. That There's a Facebook version of it. There's a Zeus version of it. And again, I'm not on the other dating, dating sites, but I'm sure they're all over there. Um, that's really all I got as far as the internet stuff. I mean, I could tell you 30 different other ones, but there's probably gonna be 10 new ones next week that are coming. So if you just go back to the basic, basic, you know, if it's too good to be true, it probably is. Don't give anybody your username or password, don't let anybody access your computers, you'll be fine. And just use common sense out there. It's, it's just like, you know, 40 years ago when people were, were trying to scam you over the phone. They're just trying to do it on the computer. And it's a lot easier now because all they gotta do is shoot this email out and just hope one person clicks on the link and then you've got an infected computer there. So, um, cell phones, 
stuff is migrating over to cell phones. I'll say the same thing about cell phones as I would about the, the computers. Just keep your, your phones up to date. So I'm sure most of you already know whether you've got an iPhone or an Android phone or some version of Windows phone. There are operating systems on those as well. Just keep those up to date and you'll be fine. Um, that's really cool. This is just like the computers. You just be careful who you talk to. Don't take calls with people you don't know. And that's really basically it. Um, I can open it up to questions. 